Texture is to do with the surface quality of something, the way something feels or looks like it feels. Pause the video and go and collect as many different textures as you can. Do you remember how we explored texture with our paper weaving? Now we're going to explore it, but using crayon rubbing instead. I had a good rummage around my house and these are the different things I found. We're also going to need some wax crayons, like Crayola crayons. Make sure that if it's covered in paper that you take the paper off. You'll find out why in a minute. Clear your working space and make sure you have a few pieces of paper ready to hand. The best kind of paper is office paper, just the regular stuff you find. Take your first textured object. Mine is a sieve. Lay your paper tightly over the top and then begin to rub the crayon over the top but make sure the crayon is flat against the paper. This is a 3D object so it's a little bit tricky to rub around it but I just need to make sure that I keep the crayon flat throughout the whole time. Can you see all those little dots of texture? Okay. Choose your next texture. I'm going to use this coaster. This is much easier because it is flat already. Lay your paper flat over the top, hold it down tightly and rub the crayon, making sure it's the side of the crayon that is rubbed onto the surface. You'll notice anything raised underneath the paper will start to show and you'll end up with a pattern. This time I'm using a large colander. Let's see what happens when I rub over the bottom of the colander. Something a little bit unexpected. I was expecting to see circles, but instead it has picked up the shape on the bottom, which is a cross. It's interesting either way. So in order to get these circles, I'm having to lay my paper over the side of the colander and making sure that my crayon is flat so I'm not using the tip of the crayon, I'm using the side of the crayon and I'm rubbing over the top. This time I got circles. I found this bamboo mat which has great lines over it. I wonder what it will look like. Now I'm starting to look at the gaps on my piece of paper and I'm starting to fill in any areas between my different textures. I'm using different colours every time I try a new texture. I like this texture, so I'm going to change my colour, change the layout of my paper and try again. I found a fan with some really interesting patterns on it. Let's see what happens. I placed the fan under my paper, thinking about the blank spaces. Lay my crayon on its side and push hard against it. This has created a really nice sharp edge. Not as much as the pattern came up, but I still really like these edges and it still looks like a fan. I found this leaf. It had already come off a plant. So I wanted to investigate what kind of texture this would make. as obvious as some of my other textures, but it's still pretty nice. Here's a piece of fabric. It's a coaster that's been crocheted. What kind of texture will this make? 
I imagined it would be much like the other coaster, but instead it's much softer. Because the fabric is squishier, it gives a different texture. I found a pot in my kitchen. This has got some interesting textures around the side. I have to lay my paper against the side of it and press. Let's see what this fabric does. I'm hoping that you'll see all the patterns of the knitting. Be careful not to get any crayon on your clothing, or on the walls, or on the brickwork outside. Mm, that wasn't as great as I hoped. What about this? This is a decorative pot, but all of the patterns are raised. Because it's 3D, I have to wrap my paper around it. I'm going to choose a different colour and work over the top of some of my lighter rubbings. I want to create a really full page of exciting rubbings. Oh, that's a good one. Look at it. The pattern is so clear. I like this one a lot. In fact, I like it so much that I'm going to try it again. Don't be afraid to layer over your different marks. Here I have the fan pattern and I'm working over the top with this decorative pot. There's a gap up here. I need to find a new texture. Oh, I've used this fan already, but I haven't used this side. Have a good look at your objects that you have because you might find there's different sides that you can use. There's a gap just here, so I'm going to select a different colour. There are a few little gaps, so I'm going to return to one of my well-known textures, which is the bamboo mat. Choose a different colour and just fill in any really obvious gaps. I love this technique. I think it's a brilliant way of making really quality looking art. Imagine making that into a birthday card or a note to somebody or a gift tag. They'd love it. Or it could simply go in a frame and go up on your wall. You can keep going and having a look around your house, in your house, in the park for different textures. You can try brick walls, you can try wooden fences, you can try the floor, you can try the pathways, the pavements. There's really so much you can try. You could even try ripping up your rubbings and making a whole new image. You could use scissors to cut around them. You could colour them in. And you could create a whole scene Here I'm drawing on my rubbings in order to make new shapes. Can you see what it's going to be? Use glue to stick all the pieces down. And then you can even draw over the top to complete your picture. I hope you have loads of fun exploring texture through crayon rubbing. I'd love to see what you can make. And I hope I get to see you all very soon. Bye!